Hello there, welcome along, Peter Rising here, another video coming at you today. Welcome if it's your first time on the channel, if it is, please do me a massive favour and hit subscribe, hit the notifications bell, it helps me a lot, you have no idea. Check out the join button too if you want to become a member. But on to business. Today, I'm going to talk some more with you about SharePoint. In the last video on the channel, I went through the SharePoint Admin Center, which is something I hadn't looked at in a very long time. And we came across the new Pro advanced features that are available. I went ahead and I activated a trial of those features. And in this video, I'm going to explore those advanced features with you. Let's take a look. So following on from the previous video, I tried to activate the SharePoint Advanced Management Plan in my tenants. I was unsuccessful in two of my tenants, as you can see here, and it told me that I'm not eligible to buy this product. I've thus far not really been able to understand why. Admittedly, I've not really dug too deeply into it. Fortunately, I was able to activate it in a third tenant. So as you can see here, it's successfully activated in this third tenant. And we have under Advanced Management Pro in the SharePoint Admin Center, we now have this Advanced Management section, which is no longer offering us the ability to get that free trial, to start that trial. And we've got some different options here now. We can go to the uh, settings for these advanced management features. And in the side panel, we can see some additional items have appeared like site lifecycle management. So let's go through and see what we've got with these additional features. Let's start with block download policy for SharePoint and OneDrive. This is a PowerShell feature to prevent download for both external and internal users. What this does is it blocks users from downloading, printing, or syncing files from specified SharePoint sites or OneDrive accounts to reduce the risk of data loss. Users will have browser-only access and won't be able to access content through apps, including the Microsoft desktop apps. We can learn more. So there's no actual configuration from the portal here what you need to do is go to the SharePoint Online Management Shell. And this learn.microsoft.com article, which I have opened twice, I'll just close the duplicate, this shows you how to do it. It goes to point out immediately that some features in this article require Microsoft SharePoint Premium, the SharePoint Advanced Management features that we have enabled as a trial, and as a SharePoint administrator in 365, you can block download of files from SharePoint and OneDrive. The feature does not require enter conditional access policies. The feature can be set for individual sites and can't be set at the organizational level. Blocking download of files allows users to remain productive while addressing the risk of accidental data loss. Users have browser-only access with no ability to download, print, or sync files, and they also won't be able to access content through apps, including the Microsoft Office desktop apps. When web access is limited, users see this message at the top of their sites, and the message is, your organization doesn't allow you to download, print, or sync from this site. For help, contact your IT department. You can block the download of Teams meeting recording files, specifically if you need to as well. And for more information on that, there is another link. Okay, so the requirements, as we've already seen, you need Microsoft SharePoint Premium, the SharePoint Advanced Management Features, and how do you set this policy for a SharePoint site? You need to go to the SharePoint Online Management Shell, and if you've installed a previous version of that shell, go to Add, Remove, Programs, and Uninstall that. So the next feature in Advanced Management is Change History. This enables you to find who made a particular site or organization setting changes and when. You can locate this uh, right from the Advanced Management here by clicking Change History, or you can go into Reports and Change History as well. It'll get you to the same location. 
You can click on to new report and you can do two types, site settings or organization settings to track changes made by various flavors of admins over the last 180 days. If you click next on either one, you can put a report name, a date range, and the sites you want to include, either all or specific, and the changes made by either all or specific again, uh, relating to global admins, SharePoint admins, and site admins. Okay, so I did take the liberty of running a couple of these in advance because they can take some time to uh, process. Um, so we can see here org settings uh, and site settings report completed. Didn't take very long to complete at all. The total change is none in the one week time range that I put in place. And I would wager that if I selected a longer time frame as well, it would not really uh, report anything either. You can uh, download uh, each of these if you want. You can uh, download the report. Um, that's grayed out because I've already downloaded said report, I'm thinking. So let's take a look. Yeah, there you go. I've already downloaded that one. The site settings report, you can download that one as well. Um, not really worth doing because I've I've not really had any changes here. Just to give you a flavor of what the headings on that uh, report look like, uh, here you can see you get the date, the resource, the action, the changes made by, the previous value, and the new value there. So um, quite useful to, to be able to do that. Um, I can't really show you any content populated in those reports, though, but uh, a good feature. The next feature is conditional access policies for SharePoint and OneDrive. This is intra conditional access related and controls whether users can access sensitive sites based on conditions like location or operating system. Clicking on the link here takes you to a learn document which shows you the requirements that you need SharePoint premium. You need some flavor of E5. Make sure you understand the limitations as well. And it all relates to in Entra setting up an authentication context. I'll not go through how you do that because I have a video covering authentication context, which I will link to this video so you can check that out. But you add your authentication context, as you will see here, then you create a conditional access policy and under cloud apps or actions, you link to that authentication context. You can then apply that context directly to a site using the SharePoint management shell. So you set the SPO site, put in the identity of the site name, then conditional access policy, authentication context, the name of the authentication context, and so on. And you can also set a sensitivity label to apply the authentication context to labeled sites as well. That's done through purview by editing the label and going to the define protection settings for groups and sites page. Ensure that the external sharing and conditional access settings checkbox is selected and then choose an existing authentication context. Absolutely fantastic. There we go. Really easy to do. The next item is data governance access reports. You can access it from the side menu here or from the advanced management here. It gives you access to three reports that you can run and view, sharing links, sensitivity, labels applied to files and content shared with everyone except external users. View the reports. Uh, these are the ones you can run for sharing links, the anyone links, people in your organization links, and the specific links share externally ones. So you can select these and run them as you want to. You'll see the last status these were ran at. And if we go into each one individually, you can see the results of any matches. I don't happen to have any because this is a very sort of dry, empty tenant with, with no real recent changes. But you would see site names here, as you can see. Same principle with sensitivity labels apply to files. You uh, get the reports that you can uh, run and then download. And uh, again, I won't uh, bother downloading any of these because I, I doubt very much I'm going to see any any uh, applied labels in recent times. And then the final one, the content shared with everyone except external users. You can uh, add a report here. You can uh, put the name in, select the template option for the various site types, the privacy of team sites only, and the sensitivity labels that you want to match against. And you can add and run that report as well. So very, very cool stuff. 
Next item is default sensitivity labels for document libraries. And what this does is to help make sure sensitive project files are appropriately labeled. If we click onto this one, we can see that site admins can apply a default sensitivity label to files in new and existing libraries. If we click on learn how to change the setting for a library, it takes us right into this learn.microsoft.com document and it tells you all about it. So when SharePoint is enabled for sensitivity labels, you can configure a default label for those document libraries. Then any new files uploaded to the library or existing files edited will have that label applied if they don't already have a sensitivity label applied to it. Uh, will existing labels be overwritten? There's a nice little table here which shows you the various permutations for that. Watch out for the requirements and limitations also. Be mindful of those and really cool feature indeed. So check it out. Um, how to turn off this feature. You can actually go into the PowerShell and set the SPO tenant to disable document library default labeling. And yeah, give it a whirl. Next, let's look at the OneDrive access restrictions. Now, this can be accessed here under OneDrive access restriction, and it's to um, allow only users in specific security groups to access OneDrive content. You can add it to up to 10 security groups. Users not in these security groups will lose access to OneDrive content, so be very careful of that. So uh, very, very dangerous if not applied correctly. Hit the tick button there, select the security groups that you want, up to 10, click on save when you're done, and all is completed. On to recent actions, and this is to review recent site changes that you have made. So if we go into, we can do this from active sites as well, but uh, a nice little shortcut from the advanced management. So if we click on that, it's gonna take a, us right into the recent actions and review uh, the most recent site changes you've made from the SharePoint Admin Center in the last 30 days. To review site changes made by others, you can go to the change history page as well. So just to demonstrate the recent actions more effectively, I went in and created a new SharePoint site. Now, if I click on it, you can see a new site is being created today. If I click on that, I can go and get further site details and get all the usual information about this site, which I've called Crisis. Really handy way of keeping track of things. Getting towards the end of the advanced management features now, we've got site lifecycle management and then site level access restriction to go. Let's check out policies and site lifecycle management. You can see it on the site here as well. Let's click on it from there. And here we can create and manage policies that automate tasks across the lifecycle of the sites, like finding inactive sites. Absolutely brilliant. Let's create a policy and see what we can do. This policy is going to generate reports of inactive sites. Uh, sites are included in a monthly inactive sites report if they have had no visits, edits, or file actions, and no activity on any connected resources like Teams, Viva Engage, and Exchange within a time period you set. It's going to send monthly emails to site owners or site admins, and then act on sites that are inactive for more than three months. So if a site is still inactive after three months, it's included in a monthly report of sites with unresponsive owners and emails will pause for the next three months. If a site is still inactive after this three month period, emails to the site owner will resume. So let's go next. Okay, set the policy scope. How long after the activity should a site be considered inactive? Includes activity on site files and any connected resources, as we've already said. We can set it to three months. We can adjust to up to six or as little as one. So what type of sites should be checked for inactivity? Sites with a retention policy, sites without owners, and OneDrive sites are excluded automatically. Any other sites that aren't in this policy can be included in other inactive site management policies. We can select site templates. Uh, we can choose all or a specific one. So I'll choose communication sites here. We can filter by the site creation source, such as SharePoint Home, SharePoint Admin Center, PowerShell or PNP. I'll not choose anything there. Same with sensitivity label. We can filter by sites that have sensitivity label associated with it. And we can exclude certain sites as well. We can give the policy a name. I'll just call this policy four because I've got some other ones in there already. You should put a description in, but I'm not going to bother. Policy mode, um, decide whether you want to activate it right away or test it in simulation mode first. I'll go active, which will run it on a monthly basis, generate the report and notify site owners and site admins. Let's go ahead and create that. 
and we are done. And there it is in the list with my other policies. And finally, we've reached the end. We can look at site level access restriction here, which is under access control and site level access restrictions. So we can check it out from here. Uh, there we go. It tells us it's a pro feature. This allows SharePoint and global administrators to restrict access to sites. And uh, for sites connected to a group or team, you can restrict access to only the group or team owners and members. For communication sites, you can restrict access to only the groups you specify. Click to enable access restriction and then click on save. Your changes have been saved. It can take about a few minutes for the changes to take effect. Absolutely fantastic. So there we go. So how do we actually do that though? We've enabled the feature, but how do we actually restrict uh, those site access permissions? Well, uh, this learn document tells you how you do it. You've got to enable it, which we've done this stage here. Uh, and then you can do it by PowerShell as well. Uh, there's the option there to use the set SPO tenant, enable access, uh, sorry, enable restricted access control true option. Let's just show that to you in action. I've selected in active sites a team here or a, or a site, should I say. If I click onto it, now that I've enabled that setting on the uh, on the tenant, I can go into the settings of this particular site and I can go down when we get the usual uh, file sharing settings, the sensitivity level settings. I now have restricted site access now that that is enabled. So it's not set, I can go in and edit that and it gives me some information here. If you restrict access to site, uh, only deployment team owners and members, that's the name of the site, only the um, the, the members uh, listed on the membership tab can access its contents. Other people won't be able to access shared site content. So you can restrict access to the site here, save that, and then that has applied those restricted site access permissions. They've been saved, may take a few minutes for the change to take effect. Really cool stuff, I think you'll agree. Lots of goodness in SharePoint Premium. Um, I'm very, very impressed with things like uh, the restricted uh, access and some of the reports that are in there. Um, it'll be interesting to see if more comes into it in time, but uh, a lot of good stuff in there. Do you think it's worth the extra? I don't know, if I'm honest. I'm 50-50 on it at the moment. I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts on whether your organization has paid that extra for SharePoint Premium and those advanced features. Um, fascinated to hear your thoughts as always. Anyway, let's wind up the video. Um, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for your likes, your subscriptions, and your memberships. Give me a thumbs up if you think I've earned it. I would be most grateful. That helps me so much too. And hit that subscribe button on your way out if you've not already done so. I'm closing in on 9,000 subscribers now. I only need about 400-ish more to get there. So hopefully we'll hit that milestone quite soon and then we can go for the big one the 10k your support will get me there thank you so much right okay take care travel well be safe and i'll see you in the next video very soon bye bye